Hi everyone and welcome to another card tutorial. Today we are going to talk about letting the stamp shine, uh, using the stamp as the proper focal image and then just add a few selective things to make it pop and make the card come together. But first, the coloring, which is ultra sped up today because this took some time. But as usual, I do have the real-time coloring video, which will be linked in the description down below, up in the right corner, at the end of the, at the, end of the video. And you, you are, can look forward to a whole hour of me coloring Alvina the Good Witch, which this stamp is called. This is also my inspirational post for the Make It Crafty challenge. If that is something you have wanted to enter, um, this is actually the last month that we are running it. So uh, come and join us. This month's challenge is anything goes. So just pick your favorite Make It Crafty image and come and join in the challenge and show Zoe all the love because she works so hard with everything and I I love the challenges. I love the challenges for f forever. Uh, the way I found Make It Crafty was actually through her challenges, which she then had um, on her own forum. It was all before Facebook and everything. She had her own forum where you could go in and make your challenges and that was how I found her and I started actually off um, using my Spectre Noirs, my first image I colored for her challenges. They were a lot of fun already then and I have had learned so much from all the challenges and everything so yeah I'm a little bit sad that everything that it, the, the challenges is ending but sometimes you have to end something to make something new but yeah this is Alvina the Good Witch now Alvina the Good Witch is one of those stamps that actually comes in different versions you buy one stamp and you get the kind of main image which is Alvina you get the crown and the spear separately but you also get one version where you have Alvina with the crown and the spear so you can kind of mix and match mix and match uh, however you want to and you can also they have a whole bunch of characters in the series so you could actually use the crowns on another character if you buy multiple of them sort of but i really really love this image and i really wanted to color her now she's a good witch and good witch have a tendency to be like blue or white and well I wanted to do something different. I wanted her to be very royal and royal for me is red and golden. So uh, but I but I didn't want that really really strong red and golden. I wanted like a little peachy. I wanted it to be a little bit softer. So I picked out a bunch of colors. I tried played around kind of um, blending them and as you see I have basically gone piece by piece these again these markers do blend but they are a little bit harder especially the two lightest um, the R00 is hard to blend but I did want it as kind of the base in it all so what I've done is I try to go a little piece by little piece uh, to color it However, if I would do that per kind of little fold, I would be sitting here editing this footage forever. So I ended up, after I've done like the arms and the uh, bosom part thingy, I just went in and did, did it color by color for the uh, skirt, at least. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of fun things with this skirt, so uh, the blending isn't as important. Um, I say that it's like you want to create something that you like, like that you enjoy. If you enjoy coloring and you don't really care about how the end result is, then 
go ahead and do that. If you like coloring and you want to learn more, then do that. Um, I'm. I actually went and bought a, a bunch of books the other day that should be coming home in like a week or two. Um, that is going through some kind of um, how to light characters and stuff like that. Uh, just because I want to learn more. But anyhow, that was a parenthesis or, or something. After I colored uh, her dress, I decided to go in with her skin and then I'm going in with her hair. I still have a couple of um, red places left, but I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do it. So I decided, well, let me wait for a minute instead of jumping in and just coloring all over the place. I just went in and did the skin and the hair in between. So the skin is my uh, go-to uh, color scheme. Um, I actually have changed the nibs on my E11 now because that has been, um, it started to get like a little pearl in front. So I cut the pearl off and I cut a little bit too much into the nib. So it's been kind of very dull and making details have been really, really hard. So I switch out to a new nib and I should be getting a little bit better results. Um, then I give her brown eyes with the same color tone as her hair so that they kind of match. And then I'm going in and doing my golden effects. Everything that is golden is very, very thin. And therefore I feel that I can get away with using just two colors, even on the dress. Uh, again, as I said, I'm going to cover this up a little bit because I'm doing my, I'm doing one of my favorite techniques. Like it's, it's the last challenge and it's anything goes. So I decided that I wanted to go out with a bang. I wanted to make something that had all the folds. I wanted to make something that, um, had some really nice colors and I wanted it to be all like just over the top. So that is kind of what I'm going for. Uh, and for, for the golden tone, I'm using a Y21 and a Y26. And on most of the details, I'm just uh, shadowing it by going over with the Y26, while on the dress bottom, I'm actually going over with the Y21 to kind of blend it a little bit, to get a little bit of a nicer roundness. So now to the cool details, I'm putting a lot of time into this, like it's about an hour of coloring video. So yeah, I took a lot of time to do this. But what I'm doing is I'm adding kind of sparkle effects. Uh, Daniel Kordek, I think his name is, he does this and he's super talented in dis uh, Disney princesses and uh, these kinds of kind of glitter effects. So yeah, um, that is where we learned and I love doing it. So usually I use a dark metallic pen, a mid glittery pen and then the white um, little uh, gel pen. However, um, I've had my Sakura so long, so they kind of dried out. I only have a few that isn't dried out. And um, so I didn't have a good mid-tone kind of yellow. So what I did was I took one of my Polychromus and sharp, sharpened that and made the little mid-tone dots with that. So you can use your pencils for the for the dots however using yellow pens you just have to kind of prickle with a pen while if you use a pen you really have to kind of make small motions for each and every one and i can tell you my hand was sore after this um, coloring copics is a whole other way than doing these kind of dots so when i for, so for the golden parts, I used a, a first the, let's see, the Jelly Roll Metallic 
uh, in the color 551. I then also used the Dark Naples Ochre Polychromos, which is the color 184. Um, and then I used a Jello Roll number 8 white. It's very important. Uh, if you're gonna buy one of the buy the white yellow rolls, you want to look at the glaze ones because they are opaque. If you take there is another one with a white cap, but it has a little star and small star things coming out of it. That one usually um, it dries white but goes on clear, while the one that has a uh, opaque cap. Uh, it goes on white and dries white so it's easier to actually add your details with it for the dress I'm using red star which is number 719 which also is a jello roll pen and then I'm using my at you at you speaker number 15 which is called peach and I finish it off with a white gel pen. And this is actually my second gel pen on this project because my first one had dried a little bit and then it's harder to do the dots. This one is a little bit younger, is recently bought, so it flows much easier and therefore I get a lot more and a little bit thicker dots. So I do all of these dotting where I'm just kind of poking the pen all over um, I do the whites where the highlights are and then I do a couple of them in the dark area which will help them to look a little bit more like it's glitter and then I finish off with these like four pronged stars uh, in some places that looks like it's kind of reflecting off those and that gives you the glitter details. Then I'm going in and I'm cutting this uh, princess out. I'm not going to show you the whole cutting, but I thought I'd show you the speed of which I'm cutting. This is in real time. I cut super slow when I cut my characters. And this is because by cutting slow, I can get a very even line all around those the whole character. And they will see almost look like they are kind of cut by a silhouette or with some dyes but yeah i'm just using my scissors just simple cutter b scissors i really like the cutter b because they have very thin blades i also use my martha stewart craft knife for those pieces that are inside uh, I don't like using my scissor there because it usually means that I kind of bend the character right, or something. And I've done this so long so I actually learned how to use a blade. But I also learned that which kind of blade you have is actually really important. If you're going to do these kind of details you want a blade that actually lies nicely in your hand. And the Mar Martha Stewart craft knife really lies nicely in your hand and the blades are actually really really affordable you can get them for basically nothing in a hardware store then i'm going to add some stars to my um, little card here and i'm using some copic marker the same copic marker i used for the dress onto the stars so that they match with the rest of the card i'm coloring up much more uh, than I need but um, I can use them for other things later on. So for the paper I'm going to use this a heart paper and that is the only sliver I have left of the whole of that pattern because I love that pattern so much that I used it in multiple different cards. So I'm going to take that sliver I'm going to cut it down to five and a half because I'm going to have it onto a, a A2 card base. I already made it so that is some Nina card cardstock, a letter size cardstock that I cut in half and then scored at four and a quarter so that I can fold that piece in half. And that is an A2 card base. So it's a standard a card base from for the US. So I'm kind of measuring there how much where I want the paper. I kind of figured out I wanted the paper to be just behind this the spire that she's holding and a little bit uh, for her face 
because I felt that I could get away with having it there and that would also bring in the pink into the card base so I will get get it to get the image to kind of fall back a little bit into the card base as you can see here I still have the white on the left side and that kind of makes the image you can see the silhouette of the image uh, I do love the image but I feel the silhouette on the side of the spire can be a little bit too much and by adding that pattern paper underneath it you kind of cut off the silhouette and therefore um, you more look at the right side of the image sort of so yeah that's the kind of thought behind how I place her like I'm working very hard to get her to pop I want her to look really good on the card but at the same time I want the card to feel complete so the last thing that I'm gonna add to the card is a bunch of these shipboard pieces now these hearts does come uh, you can buy them in small sheets separately in all the different sizes uh, but I had this little one after an old project and I thought why not just use up try to use up as many as possible so um, I'm, I'm trying to go through all of my beautiful uh, cardboard pieces and pick out as many as possible and those little ones you can kind of poke with something I took the kind of point of my scissors to just poke them out otherwise you usually can kind of push them out with your fingers and I'm using some multimedia mat on the back side of these multimedia mat is a great glue especially for when you are sticking something that isn't paper to paper when you go with paper to paper usually a dry glue is very good like a tape runner or something but when you stick other things to paper you want to have a wet glue that dries good and makes it stick and i really really love this multimedia mat for that also the multimedia mat dries them out so in case you get just a little bit outside the edges it's not as visible as if you would use a um, glossy accent or something like that to glue it down with because that if it seeps through it will look shiny and if the rest of things isn't shiny that will really really look through but yeah i i used some uh, Copics to color these because I didn't have the colors in the paint and you can use Copics for them you see it's, it's, that's why it's a lighter uh, cardstock but yeah this is the finished card I hope you liked it if you do please thumbs it up if you have any questions just a comment down below down below you can find all the details, um, all the materials used. Uh, I have links, all the links in the description or most of the links in the descriptions are affiliate links. They're basically without any cost to you in case you buy something through my links, I get a little bit of a kickback and that helps me to kind of keep um, paying for my blog and a tools that I'm using and also to make videos but thank you again for watching and I'll see you later bye